guys, Quinn here. I'm doing a book report video on this book, Bubishi, the Classic Manual of Combat, written by, or translated and commentary by Patrick McCarthy, with contributions from some other people. Now, let me preface this video about the, the Bubishi here. Uh, with a little story. So I, I'm currently following a page uh, called The Karate Nerds on Facebook and the author of this book, Patrick McCarthy, is a member in that um, in that group. Now someone had posted a photo of this book and said, hey, who else has this book? It's so great, it's so wonderful, it's amazing, yay! And I had made a comment that I had purchased the book and read it, and was a little bit disappointed that the content of this book is not exactly what I had expected with the title of Classic Manual of Combat. Now, this does not mean this is a bad book. I think this is a great book if you're into the history of, of karate um, and its, its roots in, in Kung Fu and in China. Um, I would not call this a combat manual, however. Um, so let me explain why I say that. So this book is broken down into a few different sections. Um, the first section is history and commentary by several different authors about why Bubishi is such an important piece of history for karate, um, and which it is. I mean, it's, it's good to see the, the origins here. Um, but that is basically up to page 166. Um, and that's just commentary on what the book is, um, commentary by the author and his translations on it and why it's such an important piece of history. 166 pages, okay? Um, the next section, section two, is uh, on traditional Chinese medicine, which, again, from a historical standpoint, is pretty neat. I mean, we know that China has a lot of roots in, in, in you know, herbal remedies and medicines and whatnot. Um, as far as the context of a combat manual, not really useful. There's, you know, some interesting things there. It's like, oh, try this mixture of, you know, bat dung and liver and cure your stomach or, you know, things like that. It, it you're sure, um, historically has, has some merits. In anything modern though, nothing in there it's gonna be more impressive than just going to your Walmart pharmacy and picking up a multivitamin or a painkiller or something. There's not, not a whole lot that's, that's not just more history. So we had history and then we have more history. So that, that takes us up through page 199, okay? Um, the next part starts to get a little bit interesting with the context of what I would expect a combat manual to be, and that's about vital points. So there are some diagrams, a whole bunch of diagrams, um, some more history, and then some more diagrams. Um, lots, lots of charts showing vital points and, and whatnot. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, not anything that you wouldn't see um, in a, a more modern, you know, vital striking points chart, but there's there's a lot of good detail there. So that's, that, that's something that I can really appreciate. It applied to modern karate and modern martial arts with a you know, focus on practicality. Um, so, you know, one little, gleam, one little gem in there so far. Unfortunately, then it takes kind of a weird turn, and you get some, what I call voodoo garbage. Pages 232 and two, uh, two, up through 247 um, talks about uh, linking cycles in the body in different times of the day to different vital points, and the, you know, the dim mock death touch, you know, strike a man here, at three o'clock p.m. and he shall walk seven steps and die, you know, that kind of stuff. Legitimately in here. Um, as a practical martial artist, I forever and always will put practicality and realism above mysticism. I think mysticism is what ruins martial arts and is what has led to things like Kung Fu becoming so impractical and let's face it, a laughing stock nowadays. So, voodoo, mysticism, negative points in my book for the Bubishi. Um, 
section four, okay? Uh, we get up to the fighting techniques section. Um, the first little bit there is just history. Again, history on styles of Kung Fu, which is cool. Again, seeing where the roots of karate come from and the different variations and techniques. That's kind of neat. Um, not a whole lot there as far as what I would expect in a combat manual, however. Uh, philosophy for uh, applying techniques is, is uh, follows shortly thereafter. Um, and then pages 268 to 292 are the actual fighting techniques uh, diagrams where it's actually showing techniques. Here's an attack, here's defense against it, here's the winning move, here's the losing move. That's cool. Seeing that as a, a, a actual, this is combat, here's an attack, and here's a defense for it. That's what I would expect to have a combat manual. And there is a whole 24 pages of diagrams. So, good at that part. Um, then 294 to 297 are just random pictures pulled from old um, textiles, I guess. Uh, no explanation was given with those. It just said, hey, here's some cool stances and postures for Kung Fu. And, and that's where it leaves it. So without any explanation, and then again, it says in the book, we don't know what these are. So props to them for saying, hey, we want to include these, but it's not anything that we have any knowledge of. That's cool that they could admit that. Um, and then the last bit up through page 319, uh, you got a conclusion by the author, a bibliography, so that's your references as to where they got all their, their references for the, you know, for the book from. And then there's like a two page snippet about the author. So, all in all, great book for history on karate and some of the roots in early, early you know, Asian martial arts. Um, not such a great book for if you're looking for an actual manual of combat, as this is, like right, right there. Um, I did some math, because I, I had made a, um, in that Facebook post I was talking about, I made a conjecture uh, saying, hey, you know, I was a bit disappointed because it seemed like about 10% of it is all was actual useful content for combat. And I actually did some math here. And with the charts and with the so with the, the vital point charts and with the fighting techniques diagrams, that is a whole 24 plus 8 pages. Um, and then you divide that into 319. No, 24 pages in total. And they divide that into 319. And that is 7.5%. So, yeah. Interesting book. Good read. I read it front to cover twice. And I did enjoy it for the history. Not a combat manual. So if that's what you're looking for with this, don't let fool you. It's a history book. Uh, that's all I have for today. I do hope to ha do uh, more book reports. I have several martial arts books I'd like to review. And I will catch you later. Sayonara.